Hello sailors, this is the Dodger Kebab, and the point of this video is to show and tell you about a private server for the PlayStation 3 that lets you play online games that have officially been shut down by Sony. If you're watching one of my videos on YouTube, that means you're not a complete mongrel. So you don't need me to explain to you what everything in this video means. I'll give you the quick version and then we'll get to the games. You own a glorious PlayStation 3, but some of your favorite games that you like to play online have had their servers shut by Sony. But by changing a few settings in the network options via the console's XMB, you can now connect to a private server and if you have any of these games you can show everyone just how much you suck at them online again. You don't need a modded console, this works on the latest PlayStation 3 firmware, doesn't cost any money, you can use your existing PlayStation Network account and you don't even need to sign up to some website to use it. The private server is called PS1 and they have a website that shows exactly what you need to do to get online. But really, it's just changing a few numbers in the DNS menu. So it means you're using their servers instead of the official servers that have been shut down. You're also still connected to the real PlayStation Network, and you know what that means? Trophies! Yes, all those trophies you couldn't earn because the game's online part was shut down are now back on the menu. I got this Warhawk trophy four years after it should have been impossible to earn. Talking about Warhawk, let's take a look at a game I'm rubbish at. On the PS1 private server, Warhawk is more popular than watching Amber Heard's career nosedive into the ground. You can see why though when you play it. Large scale battlegrounds where you can choose to be shot down an aeroplane, shot while in the car, or shot down while crossing the land on foot. I got my ass handed to me while recording this footage for this video, but we're talking about a group of people that have gone out of their way to play this game again, so you can bet your life they are going to be more skilled than Cal Vorderman's plastic surgeon. I don't need to explain what this game is about because it's painfully obvious from the footage what type of game this is. The real question is how does it perform on a private server? Well, as someone that does remember playing this on the official servers back in 2008, it's the same. It's responsive, no real lag, all the game modes work, and would you believe it, it even supports voice chat. And I got three of them on my tail. Four, one, they're gone, now they gave up. I'm gonna help you. When you boot up this game, the policy screen has been updated by the PS1 staff. And one of the things it mentions is that any cheaters will be banned. And I hope they do, because while in a capture the flag game, I caught this guy glitching through the wall. He's fucking gutted. The only guy happening to be standing by the flag, and probably the only guy on the server capturing footage, just recorded him using a forbidden technique and passed this straight onto the PlayStation 1 staff. This is the only real issue with private servers. Because they use a copy of the game that is no longer being updated, any glitches that didn't get patched out in the official version will stay unaltered here. Either way, Warhawk is a fun little game. Because all the players here are proper good, you'll really need to essentially grind the game at maximum difficulty before you can start making any real impact in any of the matches. From the most populated game on the server to one that is basically a fucking ghost town. Resistance Fall of Man was an okay first person perspective shooter, but when compared to its sequel Resistance 2, the first game looks a bit shit. Instead of going through the campaign, I recommend that you just watch the Internet Historian Storytime video. It's more enjoyable and takes less time. But maybe you're like me and spent money on DLC map packs back in 2007 and think it was a fucking liberty when and Sony shut down the servers in 2014. So I might as well just chuck that three pound down the fucking drain. But the PS1 private server has swooped in to save the day and now I can connect to their server and play my DLC maps again. Well, I could if any other bastard was actually playing. Although I can actually enter the matchmaking section, so I know it works, but there wasn't a single other player online when I tested it. Although it was getting late and I figured that everyone was either playing Warhawk or the next game.
Yeah, why would you play Resistance Fall of Man when you can once again play Killzone 2? The trailer before its release might have been about as real as a Billy Mitchell high score, but the game did look really good, and Guerrilla, who made it, have kept releasing stunning games since. But does this game still offer a reason to play it now? Oh well, that'll do. There weren't that many people playing when I recorded the footage, but it did work really well, with no lag and felt just like it did back in the day. I wanted to just dip my toe in and check it worked, but like a lot of the games on this private server, if you really want to play against large amounts of people, you're best at joining the Discord that is linked to their website and just see when the users are organising their large online meetups. Killzone 2 is a good game, and maybe I'll come back and join one of the Discord organised online games, if only for the juicy online trophies that can't be earned any other way. But really, I was sweating like a pregnant nun in anticipation for the next game, and the entire reason I joined this private server in the first place. In this ageless valley, a new breed of warrior has been born. Born to rage against the silence of these ancient rocks. Born to tear apart the very fabric of the desert. Born to win at any cost. The stage is set. A storm is coming. The land braces itself. Welcome to Motorstorm. Motorstorm isn't just a good game. It's not just a great PlayStation exclusive. It's one of the best games ever created, and it's criminal that not only Sony are not keeping this series alive, but they closed the studio that used to make it. So Sony are more than happy to release this wank every year, but they have a shit fit over the less than stellar performance of what the Motorstorm created on the PlayStation 4 in the form of Drive Club. But I'm getting off topic here, because no matter how angry I get over it, when I boot up the game and see the online option light up and actually connect to an online server, I'm happier than a Twitter user after finding something to be outraged over. The game works perfectly on the private server. It made no difference between playing with just one other person or having a five-man race. The game runs just as it should, with no lag or problems. Racing against just one person was a laugh. We swapped messages after the session so we could meet up again and play some more another day. But when we did play another day with even more people, I got utterly thrashed. Just like with Warhawk, any tricks that worked in the official servers also work here. So the trick of just spamming the turbo button rather than holding it down to get a far higher amount of turbo range without overheating is something that all the regulars do here. But it had been years since I played properly and I totally forgot about this trick and got rinsed out by these guys. Even though my ass was devastated by these people, I still had a blast playing with them. I came back a few times to continue playing and although there were people online, a lot of the time, and people do organise races on the Discord. For Motorstorm, there's actually a separate Facebook community where they organise big events all the time. Actually, the amount of effort these guys put into their community is quite staggering. But here's the bottom line. This is Motorstorm. It's just how you remember it. It's the best game on the service, has a large community of people playing, and is 100% worth your time. The last game I actually own from the list of compatible games is Wipeout HD slash Fury. Although this game is a lot of fun, it's probably the least worthwhile of all the titles on the service. That's because this same game is available on the PS4 as Wipeout Omega Collection, so it pretty much relegates this PS3 version to the bin. But I've got it, so I might as well try it out. Just like all the others, it runs just fine. However, also like the others, the people dedicated to playing it 
here will demolish you and they won't even attempt to take it easy on your ass. I joined the lobby and they wanted to play it on Phantom Difficulty, which is the hardest mode in the game. While they slid around the track like grease leopards, I was banging against the side more than your mum when the sailor friends come round. But that's it, I sucked, but the server quality stayed strong. And that's the PS1 private server in a nutshell. It works really well and does what it says it will, but everyone here will ruin you.